Hi everybody, Rob here from Prior Studios and welcome to this tutorial which I'm making in response to a question I had on my YouTube channel. Um, somebody showed an example of kind of uh, text being revealed in a kind of a sliding fashion um, and wanted to know how this could be done in Fusion. Uh, I think the person knew how to do it in kind of After Effects or something like that. Um, so I thought I would just knock up this quick tutorial just so you can see how you might do this. Uh, in a node-based editor like Fusion. So to get going, we've got a text object or a text node here, which you can see in this left viewer. And I have um, the, the background plate, which is just a bit of footage, uh, of me just a few seconds um, in this right-hand viewer, uh, which is connected to a merge node. Now I'm gonna take my text and I'm just gonna connect that into the foreground socket of the merge node. And now you can see this merge node in here gives us both the slider text and the background footage. So what we're wanting to do is have this reveal. So if I move through the footage, um, I was originally gonna have it kind of displaying in the space between my hands, but I thought actually uh, um, we've got a, a bit more footage to play with here. So I thought I could do a reveal there. Um, but at this point, I'm actually gonna hide it. So I'm going to set this one up first. So let's go to say frame 83 and we're going to use a mask to hide this. So I'm gonna take my text and I'm just gonna click on this button here which is to add a polygon mask. And you see this adds an object here. Now before I worry too much about the all the different aspects of this mask, I'm just going to quickly rough out where that text is. Now, before we actually animate this in place, let's just look at what our text is doing because there are some tools for kind of leading in text and things inside the text object itself. Um, and one of these, if we just take our text and make sure we're looking at that, um, we have some very simple controls for, you know, what the text actually says, what font is used. Um, but we also have this write on and off um, with endpoints that we can animate. And you can see we can write this on really very simply, just like this. And this is all we need to do is to right click, choose animate, and then we can keyframe that end position. So we could do that backwards and we could use the, the, the right on start control uh, just to hide it as well. But you can tell the problem with doing this is that we don't get partial letters. This writes on letter by letter uh, with nothing in between. So there are many times where that might be quite useful uh, for that kind of uh, murder she wrote typewriter three type thing that you get uh, might be useful for that. But I want to smooth the transition. I want it almost like my hand is just pushing it aside. Um, so you can see we might, as we move forward a frame, say here, you can see only part of the S should be covered. Uh, and that's what I wanted to look at today. So let's take our mask we'll bring that back into our viewer here and with the mask selected or the polygon mask we have this um, right click here for shape animation uh, and that's the same that's just a reminder really there's no hidden menu in there it's just to remind you you can use the set key and everything um, to control what's going on so I'm going to start off by just choosing a beginning point now I'm just lining this up with the edge of my hand uh, in the right hand picture viewer. Now, if you're finding you don't quite get enough control, then let's you can just use the, the menu here to see a bit closer. So we'll, we'll move in and we'll just see where we need to be. And I'm, all I'm doing to move this around is uh, middle mouse button and dragging, uh, just so I can see slightly better what I'm doing. I'm actually going to just go to 100%. I think we'll be fine here. I don't need to zoom in too much. Okay, let's go back to frame 82, which is uh, 83, which is there. Now, again, if you're looking at the footage, I'm just going to zoom in this window as well, I think. If you're looking at the footage, you can see it's not overly crisp. Uh, and my hand has got both motion blur and it's slightly closer to the camera than the, the field of focus uh, and you can see actually there it's probably about right 
Um, if we just move here so we can see my face, my face is the, the, the focus plane and my hands are, are nearer to the camera. So as well as the fact they're moving, they're also slightly blurry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my text and I'm just going to right click and add a blur tool in here. So let's just go for a defocus. And I'm gonna re-plug that in between my text and my merge, just so I can give myself um, a, just a slightly better look. Now, at the moment, the, the default settings aren't working at all. I don't really want bloom, that's not what this is about. Um, I want just a slight bit of defocusing, just to help it fit in with the footage just a little bit better. Okay, so I don't want it completely out of focus, but I want it to look like it sits just a bit. Okay, so that's good. I'm happy with that. Now, if we go back to our polygon mask, um, you can also see that we have this kind of harsh edge to the mask, which we want to get rid of. And so we can take this soft edge control and you can see quite clearly in the left hand window how much of that we're getting. Um, and as it updates here, you can see that it looks quite good. Right, so at this point, let's go in and right click set key. Now this key is for the whole shape of the whole uh, mask. So I'm just gonna back out again to 50% so I can see the whole thing. And uh, let's move forward. So you could do this with a start and end point, uh, which isn't necessarily the way I like to work. Um, or you could do it with, um, you know, frame by frame, but I think we can kind of do something in between. So I, I'm gonna add a, a, every few frames, I'm just gonna add a key. Um, so let's actually just bring the whole thing across to about here and I'm just going to adjust the angles here to make sure it's fitting in with my hand like so. I'm going to add a key. Let's go forward another couple of frames. Bring the whole thing across. Now I'm just grabbing on the arrows. This is like the X and Y arrows here just to, to move it into a rough position uh, which will be let's say there, just looking at this knot here. Uh, let's take this point now, but this this section here is going to start adjusting some of these just so they fit the shape just a little bit better. Now I'm not going to go to town adding loads of points to, to do this. I don't think it's necessary. It's such a short bit of animation um, that we really don't need it. Um, but you could just go in and add points or remove points to make the shape work for you. So if I go forward another, well, for, yeah, let's go forward to, to this point and we'll add one last keyframe just for this. I don't think it's probably all that necessary, but there's no harm. Okay, so right click, add a key. Now, if I fit this to the window. Let's just go to fit and I go back to here. You can see something has gone horribly wrong. And I think what I've done is I've probably keyframed the shape but not the position of the, um, the actual, I've moved the mask not the shape uh, which was stupid of me. Now I could go back and fix that and redo everything, but actually I don't need to. Um, if I go to my last keyframe, which is on frame, let's say frame 91, I think. And what I can actually do is I can take the center point, uh, which is this one here. So I've got an X and Y position there. I can add a key to keyframe to that. So all I need to do is go back. I'm going to add these in my in the same place. So if I go back to frame 83 and I drag this back to that position. I'm just gonna zoom in to just fix this in place like so. Uh, let's just go fit again. Right, that's better. Now I just need to remember to keyframe that just to 
solve the problem, make sure that it doesn't slip around too much. Okay, so I do, I just need to go back and because the interpolation is going to be a bit dodgy. Okay, so let's take this back to there. Add a keyframe and go forward. Let's go to here. Add a key. So I could have gone back in and I could have redone everything, but actually I don't think that was necessary. Not for this example. It's you know, it's you know five or six keyframes, it's not not a big deal. Okay. Right, so if we take this, we're still looking at the merge, uh, let's hide everything else and just scrub through that section. Now you can see that that all looks pretty good. My hand's wiping it out, but there is one last thing I can see where there's a bit of a problem and that's the shape here um, around the S. Because my start position um, I set on what frame 82, uh, the mask didn't account for the fact that there are previous frames. So I need to come back here, I need to select my mask, and I'm just going to change the shape at this frame. Just bring it out. I don't need to worry about changing the, the softness of the edge. Just need to add an extra keyframe. Okay, so now if I deselect that node, and now I scrub through, we have a lovely masked off bit of text uh, and it's fine it's not perfect you can see that there are a couple of places where it doesn't quite hold up just here and that would be a case of just refining the shape and animating it down here in this section um, but overall I think that looks pretty good uh, it's a pretty easy way of doing it so let's move forward I'm going to take a another text so I'm going to go right click add tool and I want a creator text plus so this one I'm going to give, uh, let's just call this uh, Reveal. Revealed, that's fine, and choose a font for this. Um, uh, the font I used before, by the way, was uh, Cash Currency, uh, if you hadn't guessed. Um, for this one, let's use uh, something like Steel Plate, Steel Works, whatever it's called, I don't remember. Uh, let's have a look. Um, Still works. Uh, it's something I just found um, for a, a quick job, which I quite liked. So let's flip this one into our. Oh, that's not right. That's not the right font at all. It's not the one I wanted. Where did it go? Still works. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to click the fit button just so I can see where this is roughly in the screen. Um, and I'm going to scrub through to a point where I'm kind of pointing so let's get it in here so we'll roughly place it at this point um, let's go for about there uh, that's looking pretty good okay now what we want to do is just very quickly write on uh, this this text how I showed you earlier um, but we really want to kind of combine these two. So I'm going to add a new tool. So I'm going to go to Composite Merge. And I'm going to take our previous one, put it into the background. And I'm going to take this new text and put it into the foreground. And then bring this in here. And now we see we have the revealed. If I select that text, I can move it into position exactly how I want it just here. Um, Okay, that's that's fine. I'm happy with that. So all we want to do is actually bring it in. So let's drag this slider back here. Let's animate it. Let's choose an end point, which will be, let's go for about there, and then we'll animate it off again as well. Okay, so we'll right click, set key, and then we'll move forward a few frames. Now, what did I just miss? I missed something there. Let's just animate that again, add a key. 
go back to here. Right, so this is going to be on here. So this should now animate on, like so. Yeah. And there we have it. Now I'm still not 100% satisfied with the positioning. Let's just go back to where my hands are in place. Now, as you can see, I don't think the timing is perfect for this. I think the timing, I think the lettering should come on at this point and then be off again about there. So I want it to be on about there. So what we can do to change this is we can go to the timeline and we can see uh, text two. Let's just select this one and uh, that's Fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the text one. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. Um, uh, okay, so I'm just going to fill my view slightly better. Uh, fold down text two, and let's just grab all of these keyframes. So I'm going to take all of those and just drag them to about there because this you can see by the change in the spline this is where the animation is actually happening uh, and now if I just drag across you can see revealed is on okay so done uh, let's just move that into space a bit as well and uh, now we could do the same thing let's go back from the timeline to our flow we could do something similar if we wanted to have the um, defocus we could copy that across and pop it into this chain here um, but we don't need to so all we need to do now to get this out as a finished file, uh, file um, is add a saver so we'll add a saver node uh, give it a name and let's just call this uh, uh, slider plate and save it into the same location and then we can render this out. So I'll render this out now and then I'll, I'll just play the whole finished thing um, just at the end. Um, but I won't let you watch the rendering process. There's no point in that. Okay, so that's rendered out and I'll just play that for you so you can see what happens. No, that's uh, being used elsewhere. Let me just quit Fusion a minute uh, and we will then open it up with to save that uh, hopefully everything is all good so no uh, let me just bring up this and we'll find the folder tutorials and here we go so end and here we go so you can see it now the slider text there masked off quite nicely and then revealed using that simpler technique so I'm just gonna go through this again I should pause it and show, so it's there in position all the time. And although the, the compositing is not really compositing, um, you can see it sits in place. It's not until my hand actually moves forward and then moves through it that it's wiped off. And then the finished reveal using just the text controls. So they, have, they really do have their place, um, as you can see. Um, it works, it works fine. Now, what might have been nice, actually, and maybe we'll look at some tracking in a, at the next tutorial, might have been nice to link the start and end points to my fingers so that it kind of moved like it was attached to me, or even if it was only a track to one finger, that might be quite fun as well. Um, but we'll, we'll do that in a future tutorial. So hopefully this has been of some help, and if you're one of the people who's asked me about text reveals, uh, then hopefully this has answered that question for you. So thanks very much. I've been Rob, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.